Hi, I'm James. Let's take a look at how to get started with the camera capture and video recorder plugin from Zero Code. Just before we jump into it, if you need any help building your app or product, feel free to reach out to our team by visiting our website at zerocode.com. We're the largest maker of plugins for Bubble, as well as the top gold tier Bubble agency. We have almost 10 years of experience and can help you build any web, mobile, or AI product, or even help automate your business. While you're there, make sure you check out zerocode.com slash plugins. This is the full list of all the plugins we make, and there's like over 700 of them. So there's something there to cover pretty much everything your app could possibly need to do. Uh, for example, you know, there's uh, Stripe Marketplace Express. This helps you accept credit card payments on your app. Uh, there's Mapbox Maps, and this gives all sorts of maps functionality. Uh, this one's really good for saving on Bubble's hosting costs. This is AWS File Uploader, so you can store your files on your own S3 bucket. Uh, there's Air Calendar, there's Air Chat and Messaging. There's so many more there, so definitely explore that and check that out. Let's start with an overview of the plugin itself. So what this plugin allows you to do is use the device's uh, front camera or back camera to take photos or record videos, and then set certain workflows and actions based on that, whether that's saving the, the images or the videos to your database, downloading, using them with further workflows, and so on. So looking at the plugin page here, there's a few things we need to take note of. The first here is this button here on the left, the live demo button. Let's start with that. That's gonna open up a plugin, uh, sorry, a pre-built app on Bubble with the plugin already installed. Uh, so we can experience what it's like from a user's point of view. And we actually, there we go, we see me right away. <laughs> so this is using the front camera on my, uh, on my laptop here, on my device. And we can see a few um, elements that have been set up in this demo app. So we can see all the states down here, whether the element's loaded, whether the camera's there, uh, whether there's commission, uh, permission, uh, whether recording has started or stopped, if it's recording, if it's saving. Uh, if I was on a device that had a back camera, I could change the camera here. Uh, but it's my laptop, so there's only the one. Uh, we can flip the camera around if we want to and mirror it. And then we can record video or take a photo. So if I press record video, we should see these states change um, based on whether the video is recording. So let's have a look at this one here. Is recording down the bottom is set to no. I click record video. This is now set to yes. This is now recording a movie of whatever I say. Uh, and saving it to a video file. And if I press stop here, it saves the file to my downloads as that's the workflow that's attached. It doesn't have to save it. We can set all that up and we'll have a look at that uh, in a moment. Um, but similar thing with uh, take photo as well. That'll then save a photo. Um, the photo it just took from the, uh, the camera here to my hard drive. If we go back to the plugin page here, the second button here is the demo editor. Now this opens up what we just saw, the exact same app with the plugin installed, but uh, from the bubble editor point of view. So we can go in and see all the, um, you know, how this is built. We can pull it apart, reverse engineer it, see what's been put together and uh, what functionality is available and how that functionality has been set up. This is really good if you're wanting to make sure that a plugin or, uh, works before you install it in your app. You can go in here and change things and see what's available to you uh, for each element. There's also the documentation link here. Now this is super important. This will give you Everything you need to set up this plugin, instructions for workflows, example workflows, the states that are available, uh, explanations of every single parameter that's uh, and the properties that are available to you here and what all the fields do. So definitely something to um, keep open in a separate tab whilst building with this plugin. The last thing to mention on this page here is our support widget, our intercom widget in the bottom right here. If you have any questions about this plugin, uh, before you install, while installing, send us a message here. We would love to help you out and uh, get you up and running with the plugin. All right, let's jump into Bubble and uh, get this set up. The first thing we need to do is get this plugin into our app. So from the Bubble editor here, click on the Plugins tab on the left, then click Add Plugins in the top right, and we're going to type in Camera Capture. And this is the one here, Camera Capture and Video Recorder by Zero Code. Now you've got two options for installing this plugin. There's a once-off payment, or you can subscribe monthly. Now the monthly subscription is the most risk-free way to try this out, as you're charged on a pro rata basis. You're only charged for the days that you actually have this plugin active in your app. Uh, so if you install it today, try it out, decide it's not quite right for you, and then uninstall it, you're only charged for that one day that you had it installed. So in this case, $5 a month divided by, let's say, 30 days in a month, it becomes very cheap to try this out. It's a, a very risk-free way to test this before you kind of upgrade to the, to the larger payment. So whichever way you go uh, with installing this plugin, install it into your app, and uh, let's jump into the editor.
Now that we're back in the Bubble Editor with the plugin installed, let's put together some basic workflows and set up here for a, for a demo app. So the first thing you want to do in our visual elements uh, section on the left here, we will have a new element called Cam Capture. And this is the actual video recorder window uh, element that we want to put on our canvas. And this is also where we get to control all these parameters of how this recorder behaves and works within our app. Let's have a look at a few of these uh, to start with. So I'm going to say yes for file uploads enabled. Uh, and I'm going to leave camera to use blank for now. Mirror, no. Crop, no. Let's say no for turn on automatically so we can look at a workflow for manually turning this on. Uh, enable microphone, I'll keep that as no. A lot of these are pretty self-explanatory as you can see. They're just setting up how this recorder behaves and what the parameters are for what we're going to be recording or capturing in terms of images. But each of these does have a show documentation um, button underneath that gives you more information. And this also pairs well with the documentation uh, link we saw at the beginning of this video. So reference both of those if any of these don't make sense to you. Ah, looks like I do need to specify which camera, so I'm just going to say front for that one there. Excellent. Okay, so if we press preview now, I don't think we're going to see a lot happen, uh, especially as we specified that uh, the camera won't start automatically. If we change that to uh, yes to turn on automatically, and now we press preview, we should see me appear in the, uh, in the corner there. There we go. Hello. <laughs> All right, so... I'm going to keep that, uh, change that back to no, because we want to, you know, use a button there, uh, have a look at some of the workflows that we're going to be using. So let's do that right now. Let's put a button on here and say, turn on camera. And I'm going to add a workflow to this button. And I'm going to search for cam here to see a bunch of the actions that are available to us. So we can see a few of them here. Take a picture with a cam capture, pause, resume, turn on, turn off, start a recording, stop a recording, reset. There's a lot of options here. Uh, based on, you know, or depending on what you're wanting your app to do and the actual functionality you're needing. But for what we want to do, I'm just going to say turn on a cam capture. To select a cam capture, we only have one on our canvas right now. So I'll keep it as cam capture A. And now if we press preview, we should see nothing but the button. And then if I press turn on camera, there we go, working nicely. All right, let's go back here and do a few other things. So, hmm, let's put another button and let's say, uh, take a photo. All right, cool. And let's put a workflow on this. I'll say cam again to filter down. All right, so we had one here, where was it? Oh, it's right under my mouse. Take a picture with cam capture, <laughs> that's the one. <laughs> All right, so we can see a few options here with this action in this workflow. So again, we specified, well, we only have one on the page. Uh, we can specify the image width and height and the file name and uh, if we want to download the image. For now, oh, we can also do the image quality. But for now, I'm going to not download the image. And instead, I'm going to display it uh, in right on the front end of our app. So to do that, I'm going to put an image element onto my canvas. Let's just put that there. And for the source, I'm going to say cam capture A. While we're here, let's have a look at a few of these. We have the image URL, whether there's a camera, if it's saving, if the permission was denied. That's a useful one if, you're, if your user accidentally says, uh, no, I don't want to allow my browser to access the camera. And you want to re, you know, put a button on your, on your interface that says re-enable permissions. Very useful. Uh, if the recording's paused, depending on the facing mode, if it's started, there's, there's a, a lot here, which is really useful for very specific use cases in your app. What we actually want is local image URL, as we aren't pulling the image from anywhere else. It's just the one that's just been taken locally. So there we go. For our image element, the dynamic image source is can capture A's local image URL. Let's try this out. I'll press preview. I'll click the turn on camera button. There's B, hello, and then take a photo. And there we are. The image has saved, put it in our image element, and the uh, actual element is still working in terms of the video feed. Cool, looking good. Let's see what else we can do. Let's look at a uh, video option. I'm gonna put another button on here. I'm going to say, uh, start recording. And I'm gonna add a workflow. 
again, type cam, and where are we? There we go, start recording a cam capture. And the one we want to uh, start is cam capture A. Great. Now we also need a stop recording button, otherwise this will record off into infinity. <laughs> there we go, stop recording. Similar thing, I'm going to select stop recording a cam capture. Great. Now if this was a uh, public facing production app, we would probably want to put on some conditions on these. So button start recording is clicked only when, uh, actually let's try it, only when cam capture a, um, there should be, is recording is no. So that you can only press this button when the camera capture isn't already recording, otherwise things would get a little bit messy. Same thing for stop recording here. Only when cam capture A's is recording is yes. Cool. I'm going to do one other thing as well. I'm going to put a text element here. Uh, I'm going to group these because I want them side by side. And we're going to say currently recording. Let's change this to a red as if we're in a recording studio. You know, I, we could find an animation of a little blinking red light, like a recording icon, but for now this should do. I'm going to set this to not visible on page load so that it's invisible to start with. And we're going to set a condition and say, when cam capture A is recording as yes, this element is visible. So in theory, when I press start recording, I'll start, this will start recording a video, this will then appear and say we're currently recording and then I'll press stop and the currently recording will disappear. Just so we have some sort of visual indication of what's happening uh, of the behavior in our app. Let's test it out. I'll click turn on camera. There we go. I'll click start recording. There we go. This is currently recording and then I'll press stop recording and the indicator has disappeared. The thing is we have no way to watch this video yet. So let's have a look at that. Now, what you would probably do in this case is once the uh, recording is stopped, you would save the video to your database or download the video or send it off to another cloud storage service or something with the video. For our demo though, we're just going to display the video result. So I'm going to search here for video player. And this is the one we want here, the one that's just called video player with the play icon. I'll put that here. Actually, I'll move that above the image element because we're going, we want to see this one here. And similar to what we did with the image element, in Video Player A, the dynamic link for the source, we're going to put Cam Capture A's local video URL. Okay, so this should mean once we start recording and we finish recording and press stop, the video will be sent to this element and we can then watch the recording. Let's test it. All right, we'll turn the camera on. There we are. Let's just take a photo for good measure. There we go, we have a photo. Now we start recording and we are recording this video. We can see currently recording, our indicator is here. I'll press stop recording. Our indicator has disappeared and we'll give it a second. And there we are, the video has appeared in the video player. I'll press play and we can see it working. Cool, working well. So we have an image, we have a video and we have all our buttons to control. So like I said, if you're wanting to work further with um, the video file once it's stopped recording or the photo file, once you've taken the photo, you might want to add a second step. You know, you might want to update or create a new thing based on the recorded video file. Uh, you might want to save it to a, an existing field in a database type or send it off to uh, another workflow in your app. Um, th there are a lot of options here with how you can then work with the media once you finish recording it. And that's very unique to your particular app. So I think for now, getting this set up this way and, and seeing how the buttons work and uh, the recorder element or the capture element and then displaying it in images and videos, this, uh, yeah, this should get you started and get things up and running. That's about it for this video. Hope this is helpful. Thank you for watching. And like I said, for more advanced implementations of this, check out the documentation or send us a message on the support chat and we would love to help you out. Happy building.